everybody, Allie and Steve here. We, uh, we wanted to send out a quick video to you guys. We, we actually are down here in downtown Denver. We're at the CU Business School downtown. And we actually just finished a couple meetings. And we figured we were talking about the election and we figured a lot of people would also be talking about this weekend. So we wanted to send out a quick video. I'd say needless to say, this election has proven to be pretty unique in the fact that it is incredibly polarizing. You know, we have each side jumping into their corners, buying their red and blue, and kind of putting their fists up. Traditionally, when we look at this, the one thing that actually hasn't changed is the fact that each side is effectively telling us that their path and their leadership is really the only way to, to get to economic and social salvation. The rhetoric has been amped up as social media has replaced traditional media outlets, but as we all know, whether you look on Facebook, Twitter, you Google anything, drama is what wins and drama is in the news. Yeah, and while traditional media um, has always had maybe some element of bias in either direction, just maybe some, um, in contrast, now we deal with things like Facebook and Twitter and there's some dude, you know, some guy, we all know who that guy is, just lets his digital rant linger there forever and that's becoming more and more common and it's hard not to give in after so many months of being battered by negativity as if anybody in this game is really selling their brand with a positive message. We feel people in this scenario are just becoming ultra short-term focused as if Tuesday's election is some sort of event that's going to determine the economic fate of our country and more importantly the fate of our clients portfolios as they prepare to meet their long-term financial goals. While the election may provide for some choppy days for sure in the market, likely it won't be anything we haven't seen before. Yeah, and by no means does this election deserve the right to detract from what this country is. In our collective efforts, this is the most economically powerful place on the planet. It's the most innovative and entrepreneurial place on earth. Now, on one hand, you have candidate Trump. He's going to try to tell you that our markets are plagued by a bubble. This is a massive bubble that's on the verge of bursting. Well. The Dow Jones Industrial Average cracked 18,000 points for the first time in the fourth quarter of 2014. And here we are in the fourth quarter of 2016, two years later. And as we're filming this video, we've got a ticker tape behind us. It's telling us that, let's see, the Dow is at what, Allie? It's about 17,942. Oh, about exactly the same uh, place. So um, I've got somebody telling me that the markets are in a bubble, but yet we haven't gone anywhere for two years and we're gonna complain about that too. Those are competing messages that I just can't reconcile. And also, bubbles are characterized by increasing leverage in the markets and the irrational buying of stocks. You know, Alan Greenspan in the 1990s, he called this irrational exuberance. And leverage, meaning using your stocks as collateral to borrow money and buy more stocks, is about the same level it was two years ago. So we haven't seen a lot of buying in stocks. Stocks are flat. We don't see any increasing leverage. And while I would argue that some people are certainly being irrational, it's certainly not manifesting itself as exuberance. And then on the other hand, you have candidate Clinton telling us how great everything has been for the last 16 years. For the last, but on that note, since 2000 of this sparkling new century, we've had a stock market returns of about 4% per year. That's one third of what they were in the previous 15 years. And to make matters worse, interest rates have been at record lows for six years. The massive amount of stimulus deployed since 2009 has contributed to record debt levels. Low rates compared to com combined with low stock market returns have made it really tough on retirees and pre-retirees to grow our portfolios. And increasing healthcare costs are making people really nervous. You know, we think that the stability of stock prices and the proximity to stock market record, record highs really put a dent in the fear tactics of political fanatics. Now, I have found that even the most ardent fear advocates don't exactly put their money where their mouth is. In all fairness, I've seen this on both sides of the aisles too. You know, stock markets are be the best indication of what people really think. When the nation is in fear or depressed, they sell stocks. When the nation is happy and excited and enjoying the wealth effect, they buy stocks. You know, we sit at about 3% away from all time highs. People aren't as scared as they say, or they certainly aren't betting on it. Good news doesn't fit either party's narrative. Here are a few stories that you're missing during this election. Today, the US has the largest oil and natural gas reserves in the world. 
In just two to four years, we will be completely energy independent. To give it some perspective, in 2010, the US was estimated as just the 47th oil exporter. Today, we're leading the world in oil exports. That is something that no one is talking about because it doesn't necessarily fit the agenda and doesn't fit the narrative of the election. So what about manufacturing? There's a lot of talk in this country about how we don't make anything here anymore and manufacturing is at its lowest place ever. Well, let's look at the facts. The US has the largest manufacturing output in the world. Our total manufacturing economy is about $2 trillion. To put that in perspective, that's the same size as the entire Russian economy. Today in the US, we manufacture more than at any single point in history. Well, we've got to talk about healthcare, right? There's a lot of talk and a lot of anger about how we pay for our health services. But let's talk about the good news. The biotech and medical fields have been incredibly successful at changing the outcomes for people's lives in the United States. You know, breast cancer and prostate cancer have seen massive, massive declines in death rates since the 1990s. In fact, breast cancer has seen a 59% reduction in fatalities, while at the same time, over the same period of time, prostate cancer has seen those deaths drop by 54%. That's great news that you're not hearing about. So we can see that the advent of new technology is becoming pervasive in every industry. You know, in the early 2000s, we were so impressed by how small and nifty all the technology and all the gadgets got. And now we're at this threshold where we're seeing the merging of technology into old industries like manufacturing, healthcare, um, and energy. And there's creation of new in industries. This just means there's gonna be more change ahead. For example, in 2014, 80% of expense rides for business travelers were in taxis, yellow cabs. And just 20% of those rides were in Uber. Today, just two years later, the market has completely flipped. 70% of the same rides are now in an Uber while only 30% remain in the taxis. This just means new challenges, especially if you're a taxi driver, and new opportunities. And really what it comes down to for us and what we've realized is behavioral finance. Behavioral finance is the real reason people can get hurt over time. As the fear and greed cycle push and pull people, which can then result in rash decisions, they can ultimately make the wrong decisions. We see this element as the single most important issue that we address in our job today. Over the next 30 plus years, you will be faced with many uncertainties, just like the election that we're heading into right now. And unfortunately, probably much worse. I wouldn't expect the next 30 years to actually look all that much different from the previous 30. We would just encourage you to use these trials as opportunities to embolden your discipline, to commit to your goals and plan. And always remember, when we use diversified portfolios, the way that they're built is not to avoid rocky markets. It's actually to be able to navigate them. So we kind of welcome a little bit of a challenge. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, enjoy the weekend. Have a great time. Uh, check out our website, www.higginsdeyoung.com for more information from us. Thanks. Happy voting.